Okay, so now we're going to go and create an animated GIF in Critter. In Critter, I'm going to go File New, and I'm going to create a canvas that is 800 width by 800 height by a resolution of 100, because I'm not printing this out, just using it for screen. Great. So top right hand corner, we've got workspaces. Default one looks like this. What I'm actually going to do is go into the animation workspace because we're going to be animating. You see that uh, with the animation workspace, you get a timeline that shows your frames. I'm creating a new layer, so I've got a white background and I've got layer one, which is where I'm going to draw my drawings. Um, just a small point that you might need to right mouse click and click on show in timeline for your layers to show up in the timeline. So I'm on my first frame, which is frame zero. I'm now going to choose a brush with which to draw with. So I'm going to go into the ink selection. And from the ink selection, I'm going to have a go with the basic five size. So go ahead now and draw a kind of a skull shape. I've got pressure thickness on this brush. Um, it's not great drawing. Uh, this is about just learning the, how to do it rather than how good it looks, I'm afraid. Hopefully yours will be a lot better. Going ahead now, drawing that skull shape, putting in the details. And I'm also going to put in some expression lines to give a sense of uh, animation. Now, what I could do with doing in Critter is setting up some shortcut keys so that it works a bit like TV Paint does. So to configure those, I go to Settings and on to Configure Critter. And then you can see I've got keyboard shortcuts there. And the ones I'm looking for is under Animation. And basically, I'm looking for Create a Blank Frame. It needs to be Backspace. So Yours won't have anything on it at the minute, but you can click on it. It will ask you to input the key you want to use. Press the backspace key, and there we are, that's set up. So in exactly the same way, I'm going to go and do previous frame for the left arrow, next frame for right arrow, and space bar to start stop. So now I can go, I'm going to animate on two, so I can go forward a couple of frames. And now I can press the backspace key, which will give me a new frame to draw on. 
And clearly what I need now is my onion skinning turned on. So I can click on the little onion skinning icon. That will show me how I can control my onion skinning. So I've got uh, whatever I want to turn on and the opacity. So I'm just going to do it so that I've got previous frame, next frame is selected. And with that control set up, you shut that down and I can just turn on onion skinning for that particular layer. And there we are. I've got my ghosted image there. So now I can draw my next frame, my next drawing, uh, using my previous one as a guide. So again, excuse the quality of the drawing. You want to alter the brush size um, in Critter. You can use the bracket keys as your shortcut. So I'm doing my expression lines a little bit further out to show some animation and some progression. Now basically I'm going to repeat that process again, press the backspace key, draw around using my onion skin as a guide. Again, progressing the lines out. If you mess up and you want to erase, you can press E or click on the here, go into erase mode, and then just unclick or press E again to go back into brush mode. And here we go again. This time I'm usually doing my expression lines as they're almost popping. And finally, I'm just going to draw a skull on its own with no lines, expression lines, so that we've got a bit of a hold before the cycle repeats itself as an animated GIF. Again, using your rays, mess up.
Now I'm going to go forward a fair few frames, let's say to frame 14. Uh, I'm going to press backspace to end the animation there. Good time to save my um, file. Probably should have saved it before now, but here we are. So now go ahead and preview my animation. Basically need to put in my start and stop boxes zero for a start and 14 for the stop. And then I can preview my animation as it will look when it, ex it has exported. go so that's all looking okay so if I want to export this out as an image sequence it's straightforward enough so I might want to do that to take into After Effects or TV paint or use for some other purpose way I'll do that is I would just go to file and render animation. And all of these settings will be as we expect them to be. So I can choose if I want to render out um, an image sequence or a video or both. And see, I have lots of options, which makes it very versatile. So I'm just going to try, let's say, a PNG uh, image sequence. This remains to find where I want to save it to. Once that's sorted, I can just click on OK. And export out my images. Sure enough, the image sequence will be where I saved it to. We are I've got all my individual frames, but if I want to do an animated GIF, I need to export it out as a GIF movie. If I wanted to export out as a movie, like an MP4, MPEG4, it's a little bit more involved the first time. After that, it's pretty straightforward. So we have a look at the render animation box again. We choose um, our format, less formats here, but still perfectly adequate. 
so GIF, and I try to render out a video, it will say that Fritter can't find FFmpeg. So what we have to do is download FFmpeg, put it on our computer, so that Critter knows where it is. So the way I did this was I simply searched for FF uh, Critter FFmpeg. And then the first hit, render animation, critter manual. If you scroll down this page until you get to render animation. Nope, sorry, further down, setting up critter for exporting animations. Go to the FFmpeg website and click on I found mine here. And you will get to this page. Because I'm a Windows 64-bit computer, it's a static build that I want. So Windows 64-bit static, I can click on download build and that will download the version that I need. So I can now uh, save it. Once it's saved, double click on it to uh, extract it. Click on extract all. Browse where I want to save it to and extract it out to my cho chosen location. Now, back in Critter, if I go back to my file and render animation, I can now choose the location of my FFmpeg by clicking on the browse just choose my format a minute right so I can browse by clicking on the folder for the location of my FFmpeg so it'll be wherever I extracted it to so into the FFmpeg folder in again and then into the bin folder. And in there we can select FFmpeg. And that's it, it's all good. Won't have to do that again as long as I don't move my FFmpeg fo uh, folder. So now I can choose my GIF image. And click OK. And I can render out an animated GIF movie file. And if I go to the folder that I've exported it out to it's a bit difficult to see which one it is so let's go to the text view and then I can see look for the gif file there it is if I double click on there Sure enough, there's my animated GIF all ready to drop into social media. So I hope that's been a useful little tutorial. Um, thank you very much, and I shall see you again soon.